three, two, one. Robert Kilgour, Executive Chairman of Renaissance Care. Welcome back to the Care Home Show. Uh, very glad to, uh, to be back. Um, uh, it doesn't seem, uh, I was checking this actually last night. Um, it was 237 days uh, since I did the last one. Um, uh, um, I'm not sure I've lost any more hair. I'm not sure I had any more hair to lose. But um, 12th of November was the last time we had a chat um, uh, in, in this way. And obviously there's been a general election in December, Brexit end of January and, and uh, COVID-19. Um, it's been quite a roller coaster ride um, and a challenging roller coaster ride. Not that I like roller coaster rides, actually. Um, I hold the handbags for my daughters and my wife <laughs> while they go on the roller coasters. Um, uh, I stand at the bottom and look after the bags. Um, but it's been quite a ride, 237 days. Um, uh, it's, it has gone by in a bit of a flash, actually. Um, for all the reasons between the general election and implications and Brexit and implications and and obviously COVID and implications. I mean, just um, uh, quite an unreal um, uh, 200 odd days. Um, and, and, and particularly, particularly for uh, the care sector that yes, has remained, I keep getting told this by colleagues in other uh, business, in, uh, you know, from hotels to, hospitality that well at least you've remained open and yes it's true we have remained open but um, uh, it's it's been uh, quite a tsunami of, of, of things thrown at us and thanks to the amazing work of our frontline staff uh, who have been just truly uh, amazing and um, and 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 I am, I, I'm, I'm having been in the sector just over 30 years, I'm, I'm actually the proudest I've been um, uh, of late, um, of, of being involved um, in the, in the uh, care home sector um, in, in the entire 30 years of being involved in it. Uh, I'm the proudest um, uh, that I've ever been actually of the way that, um, our staff have uh, uh, behaved has just been um, fantastic uh, and I'm so proud of them and uh, I've tried to do my little um, sort of contribution by working around the clock behind the scenes 24-7 um, uh, um, uh, supporting them doing the really hard lifting and heavy lifting um, uh, at, at the front line um, but there, it's been uh, it's been quite a time um, uh, and actually I would I would like to think the sector as a whole in in the public's um, perception and the public's um, view have performed well and uh, maybe the appreciation um, amongst the public has um, risen during this tragic um, COVID-19 crisis and and I suppose one of the concerns that I have as we're coming out of it is how we can make sure that um, we drive forward and progress from that appreciation and wider support that we have in the public to actually uh, finally get the social care reform that we've all been um, uh, banging on the door to have for many many years um, it's it's um, what we desperately as um, Sir Simon Stevens chief executive of NHS said yesterday on Andrew Marr's program um, he's looking for it to happen and social care reform meaningful social care reform within 12 months and I would obviously very much welcome that mm. Definitely. Well, I mean, you've certainly covered some uh, some some ground in your or, or your introduction. We've uh, we've covered yeah. more ground since our since our last, last podcast, Robert. So, um, wh where where do we start with all of this? I know there's some uh, some things that we want to uh, to explore, but from kind of a yeah. high overview perspective, I guess where do we where do we start, and what does the world look like from your perspective? Um, well, I think a, a, a brief run through the sort of uh, timeline. Um, 
uh, would perhaps be um, uh, be helpful. I've even got for my my uh, age of memory might be wrong, um, uh, but we we started to have lockdown. Uh, we had partial lockdown first of March, and we had uh, full lockdown from the 11th of March, ahead of the government's lockdown 20. 3rd of March, I think from memory it was, um, and we had our first um, positive um, resident testing positive for COVID-19 on in Edinburgh, one of our Edinburgh homes on April the 3rd. Um, and we had started from April the 1st, um, getting all of our staff in all uh, homes um, wearing masks from the 1st of April, but we didn't have that completely rolled out again ahead of Scottish Public Health Scotland's guidelines and Scottish Government guidelines. We had all that rolled out through all of our 15 care homes by uh, the 20th um, from memory of, of April. Um, and then um, Monday the 15th of, of June, 73 days after um, getting the first positive uh, uh, case in a resident uh, of ours, um, we all our homes for the first time were COVID free, um, which was quite uh, quite um, a moment. And at its uh, at its peak, if you like, um, ten of our fifteen homes. Uh, we have fifteen homes across Scotland, seven hundred and thirty registered beds, and about eleven hundred and twenty currently staff, um, both part and full time, and including bank um, staff, and. Um, we had 10 of our 15 homes at peak that had either um, a positive um, case or suspected case. Um, and because testing was obviously um, one of the main issues or lack of availability of testing for staff and residents. And so in our estimation, 10 to 15. And we've had 48 deaths following a positive test of residents across eight of our 15 homes but equally we've had 91 residents recover from COVID and only a very small number of those were ones that had gone to hospital recovered and then come welcoming them back but um, the vast majority were um, nursed back by our carers and nurses to um, health and through uh, COVID including uh, uh, one of our residents whose name I'll not mention but he's He's, he's a great guy uh, who's 102 um, and he tragically got it but, but um, uh, recovered. Um, uh, I think in that particular instance it was just the sheer, his sheer will uh, I think. I, I wouldn't claim that maybe the, maybe the nursing and caring had some aspect of it but boy is he a force of nature and uh, so um, yeah it's been, a, it's been quite a, a journey and yes we've had um, issues from PPE supply issues to testing issues, availability of um, uh, to dealing with hospital discharges without testing to funding issues. So those are, if you like, the four in that sort of timeline that I've mentioned, those are sort of the four main challenges um, from the kind of Dunkirk spirit that our staff showed by going around to nail bars and construction companies and whatever, getting masks at the beginning. Um, and we, we actually got, we got one delivery of a week's supply of PPE from the Scottish Government uh, delivered to all of our 15 homes between the 20th and 26th of April, which we're very appreciative of. Um, uh, subsequently, they have said that they intend to invoice us for them um, uh, shortly. But anyway, we got, we got delivery and the government did set up community hubs as well um, across um, uh, Scotland. And we did get some um, PPE certainly from the various community hubs as well and from our existing suppliers, from new suppliers. Um, uh, but a lot of suppliers existing and new Obviously, prices went up, as we all know, but also a lot of the comment was we can only give you 20% of what you want because we've been told to prioritise the NHS, um, although that has 
been strenuously denied by uh, government. But then that's the same government that, uh, and the same government minister, in fact, that um, also said uh, that care homes have been a priority from the start and that uh, the government um, threw a protective ring around care homes. So um, you can take from that um, uh, what you will. But I mean, that was uh, actually, of all the comments throughout the COVID crisis, that comment about priority from the start and protective ring around care homes is probably the one that still to this day stands out with me as as the most outlandish outrageous um statement um uh, but then you know uh, i don't want to be politically incorrect or or criticize government ministers i mean i i appreciate government have had uh of all whether welsh scottish or and Westminster have had a really, really difficult job to do. Um, and I appreciate that. And also appreciate that criticizing in hindsight is, is easy. Um, but um, I, I do think there were, um, well, every, everybody makes mistakes. Um, uh, I make mistakes. We've made mistakes at Renaissance. And, and, but it's about admitting mistakes and learning from them. And we've certainly uh, done that internally. Um, and I'd like to see, um, before the threat of, um, and yes, it's preparing for the worst and hoping for the best as far as preparing for a potential second wave, but um, I would, um, uh, which, no idea when it, I suppose um, the sort of time period we are preparing or expecting that it might happen is any time really between now and March next year. Um, I mean, uh, when you look at the types of time that you, uh, you do get um, uh, viruses like Novavirus and and uh, and flu attacking care homes, and we've really got to be. I think we've forever to be on our guard, frankly, going forward. And um, anybody says in the care home sector that says that all we have to do is keep our heads down and things will return to normal within six or seven months is is um, really, frankly, fooling themselves because. Um, it, it, there's a seismic change, um, really, I, I view it. And we are certainly at Renaissance in our small company. We've thrown everything up in the air and re-looked at everything we do from... Um, and some things have be, been, on, on a positive front, have been um, uh, the change, uh, you, more use of technology working remotely has, has, has been a positive. I mean, um, managers... Um, and senior managers are more productive. I mean, they have operational meetings uh, online now every morning, um, but they don't move. They're not moving. You know, they're not driving to somewhere to have a meeting to drive back. So they're they're out of being on the shop floor um, for a much shorter period. Um, and yet they're having, instead of a weekly meeting in person, they're having a, a daily meeting online, albeit it might, be reduced now from an hour um, in length to half an hour um, and, and it's, it, it's also been really good and that's why I still think it's important to continue them for um, uh, supporting each other for the care home managers and the senior managers to support each other um, um, because in my reading certainly um, the critical time coming out of a um, uh, a crisis um, of any kind um, or after a, a, a pile up on the motorway car crash or an airplane crash or any kind of crisis. Um, adrenaline gets you through the actual, gets the people involved through the actual event. It's, um, it's coming out of it that, that where the danger area um, is from the um, mental health um, uh, issue point of view. And so it's very much um, uh, supporting staff and the mental health issue and making sure even simple things like making sure that they're taking their holidays, um, their days off and their holidays, even down to simple uh, thing, things like that are, are, are absolutely key. But quite, quite a lot of challenges. The testing was um, uh, quite a roller coaster, quite a lot of uh, postcode lottery involved in the testing, frankly. Um, uh, um, and 
um, also the, the uh, asymptomatic testing. We certainly had, when we did get from the Scottish Government mass testing, we were getting about seven, just over seven and a half percent of staff with no symptoms that were tested as part of a mass testing uh, blitz uh, were found to be positive. And yet we were told by the Scottish Government that staff that didn't have any symptoms that tested positive were less infectious. Um, so um, you know, I'm not a medical person, but that's what we were told. Um, and actually, just over 10% of residents that were tested as part of this blitz testing by the Scottish Government um, that had no symptoms were tested positive as well, which was um, uh, a surprise, or well, certainly a surprise to us. Um, so testing was big. Obviously, uh, March and April, we had 910 in March residents um, discharged from Scottish hospitals to care homes and uh, 510 or 501 I think it was um, in in April up to the 21st of April um, uh, when from the 21st of April we had um, uh, the Scottish Government introduced that um, any discharge to care homes from hospital needed to be uh, have two negative um, tests and um, uh, that I believe was six days after that had been brought in in England um, on the 15th of April. I'm not quite sure if Scottish Government had the same sage advice as the UK Government why um, it took them six days longer to come in with that and and certainly we had a couple of hiccups along uh, the road with discharges from hospital. We took a policy from the beginning of isolating um, any discharge both before the 21st of April and afterwards, um, uh, isolating them and treating them as positive on admission um, uh, and treating them as, uh, as that, whether they were or not. Um, and that was just some, a decision that, um, that we made um, as a company. And actually, one, on one occasion before the 21st of April and on one occasion afterwards, um, we were assured on this particular one before the 21st of April that the resident, that the, the discharged um, uh, person had tested uh, negative. And then uh, later in the day after the admission in the morning, we were informed by the hospital that they made a mistake and that the person had in fact tested positive, even though there was no symptoms. So, um, uh, and subsequent, we have actually had one post 21st of April where um, we had been assured the person had had two negatives and half an hour, half an hour after admission, the hospital phoned us to say that the second test, actually it was a mistake. The second test had been positive. Um, so, um, uh, and um, immediately we reported that to um, uh, the Care Inspector in Scotland and to Public Health Scotland. Um, um, but we had obviously, as I mentioned earlier, isolated and treated as positive anyway. Um, and um, that was, um, it, it, it was investigated by those bodies and found to be um, uh, human error at the hospital end and no more was said about it. I, I would like to know what, if we had made a mistake like that, what, um, uh, whether that would have been the same kind of reaction but you know um uh hey ho that's what 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 happens but um so and testing has been and testing now uh we are certainly getting weekly uh testing of all staff um care home staff in scotland um in some small areas like edinburgh it's um teams come in and do it um although we expect that to stop soon in the vast majority of the country um, of Scotland, uh, it is testing kits being sent to the care homes. So there are extra pressures on the care home managers and on care home staff to do the testing of themselves. themselves. And that has increased costs and increased stress on the care home managers. And I am quite concerned about the burnout and stress um, of care home managers coming out of this. And obviously uh, the testing, although Yes, we've been calling for it, and it's until we have a vaccine, it's what 
needs to happen. Um, um, and uh, uh, so that's on testing, hospital discharges, and on funding, I would say um, still very disappointing. The, it's, it's again a postcode lottery, talking to colleagues in Scotland, between um, and quite a disconnect, really, a real disconnect between what's said at the podium, um, uh, both at number 10 and uh, in the regional, uh, in Scottish parliaments. I don't know about the Welsh Parliament, um, but it, by the Welsh First Minister, but certainly by the Scottish uh, podium team, Scottish Government podium team and Westminster podium team, uh, you get the warm words from the podium, but actually there's quite a different, quite a disconnect between that and what's actually happening at the, at the front line. And uh, my um, uh, contacts in England tell me, and, and uh, it's certainly what's happening in Scotland, this is a real postcode lottery. Some local authorities have been good at uh, delivering the money to the front line um, on uh, once claim forms have been uh, completed, substantiated, and evidenced by documentation, etc., cetera, as, as it should be. Um, but others have been extremely slow. I would say at the moment, um, at Renaissance Care, we deal with 10 different local authorities across our 15 homes throughout Scotland, off 32 in Scotland. And we have had 1%, 1% of what we've claimed has actually come in to date. Um, uh, that was on Friday, this is Monday, so um, uh, it may be slightly different. But uh, And in fact, one local authority um, still hasn't provided the claim forms, because um, uh, each local authority has kind of taken a different, they've not used the same claim form procedure, they've taken a different view on it and have uh, produced their own uh, type of claim form system. Um, and Edinburgh and South Lanarkshire were very slow, and a week ago today, I think they came out. But Murray Council in Scotland have still not, as far as Friday anyway, close to play Friday, had not um, even. Um, uh, made the claim forms available. Uh, obviously, um, they've had a lot of things on too. Whether that's uh, just um, uh, pressure of work, or 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 there is more delaying tactics involved there, I don't know. It's it's it's. Um, uh, I'm trying to be, uh, as with most things, um, being an entrepreneur, I try and be glass half full as opposed to glass half empty. But. Um, uh, it, it's certainly not, the money has not got through to the front line um, that has been promised from on high. And that's something that's still uh, still a concern. But on the positive note, we are, um, you know, we are in a better uh, place than, uh, than we were. Um, at peak, we had 15% of our staff off, the staff doing double shifts and some doing triple shifts, although I didn't find out about that till um, after. I wasn't particularly pleased with that, but um, uh, um, certainly we're back, well, we're down to about 6% um, of staff off, and that includes for all sorts of things, whether it's shielding um, for members of the family or themselves, um, long-term shielding. Um, and uh, so there's, there's, uh, there's certainly staff, uh, and that's why we were really pushing um, staff to get their holidays and get, um, as part of preparing for the worst and hoping for the best, really. It's making sure there's a breathing space that I see at the moment and making sure that we, um, uh, staff get some time to um, uh, recharge um, their batteries and, um, and in fact, welcome back um, uh, relatives. I mean, that's a big um, issue. I'm not sure about in England um, uh, where that is, but in Scotland, uh, Scottish Government allowed outside visiting from Friday the 3rd um, of July. We chose um, for a variety of reasons to start it today, Monday the 6th, um, uh, in the vast majority of our homes, although there are a couple of homes that will have to wait about another eight to ten days um, because Scottish Government's uh, guidelines were outside visiting could happen in homes that have been COVID free for 28 days. So a couple of our homes 
um, don't quite meet that criteria for um, today. Um, uh, but a lot of planning has gone in in advance in anticipation of this for both the outside visits and also for the hopeful second um, tier visits, um, the inside visits, uh, including um, uh, Renaissance Care has spent um, a six-figure sum on thermal imaging cameras, air purifiers, uh, booking app, etc. for um, uh, working through our website um, to um, make visiting um, uh, work and work in a safe manner uh, going forward, both for the residents, relatives, and 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 to for the for the staff. Mm. With okay, so there's a lot to unpack there. But um, okay, so one of the things that you talked about was the fact that obviously there have been plenty of challenges. Uh, not to mention the uh, the fact that there will have been mistakes made, and that uh, obviously those mistakes need to be used as as, as learning opportunities. Tell me from your perspective, so what, what have been your kind of greatest leadership lessons that you'll come away uh, from after the, uh, uh, the, the COVID outbreak? Um, uh, other than the sleep is overrated or, um, uh, uh, I, you know, um, I have been working 24 seven um, right through weekends too and whatever on, um, on this, not just, um, uh, on renaissance stuff uh, and also i have other business interests in, in 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 other sectors that have actually in some cases been hit harder as far as that they've certainly been closed to a greater extent and therefore different uh, issues and different problems and a different level of support uh, as non-exec required um to the executive teams that i've been uh, providing on those business interests um but um uh compared to um, what uh, our staff have been dealing with at the front line, what I've, you know, any sleep deprivation or otherwise that I've had is, um, uh, or been stuck inside when it's nice weather outside, um, is nothing compared to what they've been doing. So I've been driven by um, their efforts, actually. Their efforts have as I said earlier, I'm very proud of, um, uh, very proud of them. Um, and um, uh, their efforts and what their dedication and amazing work um, has energized me um, uh, to um, really um, uh, work around the clock supporting them in what little what ways I can from behind the scenes uh, as well as um, uh, because of my advanced age um, I can uh, you know I'm less uh, politically correct or uh, diplomatic um, in, in maybe my uh, views or actions and therefore um, I, uh, um, the majority, it's fair to say the, the, the majority of my career is behind me, not in front of me. Um, and so um, uh, I, I, I felt it was important to uh, speak out um, uh, and speak truth to power, albeit um, uh, um, it does risk um, getting uh, uh, hit on the head um, by those in power um, back. But I, I just felt there was an, uh, a need to speak out. Um, and um, uh, I do know that, uh, in fact, I had a nice email this morning from a younger care home operator that has a few homes in Scotland, um, <coughs> who actually emailed me apologizing for, for not speaking out more during it. Um, and gave me the reasons which we all know why he didn't, uh, why they don't, but, but actually thanking me for, uh, for doing that. Um, and I've actually had some really nice letters from uh, relatives of residents thanking me uh, as well. So um, that's been um, good. It's not pleased everyone. Some of my fellow directors um, I know would rather that I kept quiet and that we kept a low profile through this, but I, I think it's important to speak out. And um, there were certainly um, a lot of issues that um, I felt the um, government were blaming the care home sector um, for uh, things, including the spread of um, 
the virus throughout care homes due to lack of um, uh, social distancing and, and, and infection control. These things were said from the podium and I thought it was important to uh, point out lack of availability of testing for care home staff and asymptomatic uh, care home staff issues were uh, and discharging of residents from hospital to care homes without um, uh, proper testing were all probably more way more to blame um, but um, I think there was a need to speak out and I don't regret um, I mean I'm yeah I made mistakes I may regret some of the comments or statements that I made but on balance um, uh, I, I'm I'm happy I did that I can um, I suppose it comes down to I can look myself in the mirror as we come out of this saying, you know, I tried, you know, I made um, uh, I made an effort to um, uh, to help not just behind the scenes for Renaissance care and also sending support messages to senior staff and all staff. Um, we have a Renaissance care staff Facebook um, group that's over 600 um, uh, and so I, I in fact I sent a message um, a positive chairman's message to that group last week um, and I sent a present of gin to each of the care home managers um, uh, and both were uh, well received um, uh, but uh, you know uh, um, the reason I go into this well apart from getting into this sector by accident which we've talked about before um, uh, the reason I stayed in it and when I was out came back in was because um, I love people and I love property and this is a people business and um, uh, the reasons why I came back in if you like um, after exiting Four Seasons um, why I came back in and started up Renaissance Care have been re reaffirmed to me certainly by uh, this COVID experience um, um, because uh, of the amazing people that that work in it, and I, I just am further re-energized um, uh, to do my role, uh, my small role in the company going forward, um, uh, to make sure that the staff that have done such an amazing job can get um, uh, properly rewarded both pay and conditions and uh, and depreciation um, from from government I'm less worried about the public appreciation because I think that's there um, uh, I'm I'm really quite keen that um, and I speak to and I know Martin Green in England and Donald McCaskill in Scotland both of whom have done a fantastic job um, uh, uh, and Mike Pagnum as well and, and others have done a fantastic job um, in speaking out um, but I think it's um, uh, it's important that we um, we do hold government's feet to the fire on this, um, both in Scotland and in England, and no doubt in Wales. But really, um, it's um, uh, this is a time. I mean, we've been a Cinderella service too long, and this is a time to sort it out. And the public support is, I feel, there to do it. So government have no excuse, in my view um uh to to deal with it um and and there needs to be both a short-term review before the, the autumn um for lessons learned in case we have a second wave but obviously next year there needs to be a much uh, fuller review and i would um look for major social care reform to happen within a year i, I would be very much lobbying for that any opportunity i get so in in, in that in that vein of conversation then. So how do you see this playing out? And I guess there's, there's two different strands to the question. So what, what would you like to see happen? And then what do you envisage happening? Because there may of course be a, a disconnect between those, those two worlds. Yes, yeah, no, no, I mean, it does all come down to um, the social care sector need to be paid um, uh, the true cost of care for providing the care that they do um, um, and it, it, it just cannot be right that um, uh, what I consider to be skilled not unskilled I hate that when I mean carers are skilled staff and I think the public now realize that through the experience of COVID I think it's absolutely 
uh, essential that that the um, staff are properly uh, rewarded um, for. I mean, it's just not right that, that people should be paid more for stacking um, supermarket shelves in Aldi or Lidl than than uh, uh, caring for our vulnerable elderly relatives. It's just not right. And um, in Scotland, uh, I have to say, the uh, Scottish Government, and I have publicly praised them before on this, um, they have introduced a few years ago uh, uh, such a thing, a uh, thing called Scottish Carers Living Wage, which is for age 18 and over, um, which is higher than the national living wage, which is 25 and over. Um, and so, um, uh, the, the Scottish Government have to be uh, congratulated when they did that. They didn't fully fund it. We were expected to um, uh, to part fund that, which we did. And um, on balance, I think that has improved, um, uh, has reduced staff agency um, uh, usage. Um, it has helped staff uh, recruitment and uh, has also helped staff retention, um, the turnover of, of staff retention, um, which is obviously a, um, a big issue for the sector, both before COVID, during COVID, and, and in fact, staff recruitment, staff retention, big, big issue um, for us all uh, going forward. So I hope um, change happens. Again, glass half full as opposed to glass half empty, but um, I'm, uh, I'm not so naive uh, that um, I mean I'm a Scottish rugby supporter, so I might be optimistic, um, uh, but um, doesn't always doesn't always come to fruition, um, sadly. Um, but um, I'm uh, uh, I, I think we've all to um, uh, to work hard at pointing out that we do an amazing job as a sector, providing a really high level of care for what I consider to be fantastic and I think has been proved by freedom of information stuff that I've done in the last few years um, to highlight uh, incredibly good um, value for money for the taxpayer. Um, certainly compared to um, uh, Scottish local authorities, about 15% of care homes in Scotland are run, uh, owned and run by uh, Scottish local authorities. Not all Scottish local authorities uh, own and operate care homes, but a fair chunk do. Um, and certainly the cost is um, by the freedom of information that I did 18 months, two years ago, exercise um, uh, at a lot higher cost than what they pay uh, per resident per week and what they pay the independent sector. So that needs to be, I mean, I'm, I welcome a full review of social care. Uh, Scottish Government are keen to have it. I welcome it. As long as it's not a kangaroo court to beat up the independent sector, and as long as it is an all-encompassing looking at NHS provision, local authority, charitable and, and uh, independent sector, uh, I think we do do a good job. Um, and I think we, um, uh, yeah, we need to reform. Uh, there'll be things that we need to change. Um, uh, an interesting one, um, we've actually looked at how we manage care homes going forward um, and um, both use of technology, remote working, working smarter, um, being prepared to look at things differently. It's easier for us being a small company with just 15 homes. But for example, we took on a home during COVID actually in, in April. Um, and uh, uh, we went from 14 to 15 in the midst of COVID, which was quite a, a, a challenging and interesting experience. But we had two area managers for 14 homes going into COVID. We're now putting in place three area managers for 15 homes coming out of COVID. I think the amount of support um, that care home managers need, um, uh, I think, um, uh, amount of help, support and guidance that they need in the new normal coming out of COVID. Um, the smaller areas um, and area managers covering, I mean, area managers covering 10 to 12 homes. I mean, you know, frankly, you're as well not having them probably. I mean, I don't see how they can um, uh, uh, manage in, in, in the new normal going forward where there's so many more things we're going to uh, need to be uh, doing uh, and be on top of and and I relish that challenge and my senior team are really excited about 
uh, about it. And yes, it does add costs, but it's about doing uh, the right thing. And I, I believe actually, if you do the right thing in, in the right manner, then then you will it, it will flow to uh, to increase well a higher than average occupancy and better staff retention, staff recruitment, uh, and it will flow to the bottom line. Um, so I do, and it's not all um, uh, doom and gloom, but it's about doing the right thing. Um, and uh, so we're quite excited about, um, uh, about that. And we're excited about how we, uh, we're getting resi re residents' um, relatives back. Um, I mean, it's um, a key part of any care home um, is uh, engagement with the relatives and relatives engagement with the care home, with the care with their relatives in the care home, but also with the staff and with the home. Um, I mean, uh, the atmosphere in some of our homes um, when I go around pre-COVID, I haven't been around obviously during and since, um, uh, there's a real buzz in some of our homes uh, when you go in, when there's lots of relatives in and there's a, uh, an event on in the garden. Um, and there's a real sort of team spirit um, uh, and it's a real soul of the care home is the mixture between the staff, the residents and the relatives. Um, and it really, uh, there are some visits that I was doing pre-COVID um, in January that you come out with um, just on, on, a, on a high, you come out really walking on air. It's just so nice to see. It's why um, uh, I'm at my advanced year still in the sector. Um, and I think there are current issues, um, I have a few of those noted down, we've talked about them, funding, preparing for a second wave, um, making sure our PPE stocks, both in individual homes and centrally, uh, are um, both full, renewed and at a larger uh, level than before, um, so that when we have, if we have God forbid a second wave uh, um, that we don't have um, problems with um, log jams and PPE delivery. Um, relatives visiting, as I said, in a safe um, manner is key. Um, and um, staff testing happening uh, weekly. Um, um, I think in Scotland we have a thing called test and protect, which is, um, I think in England it's uh, test, trace, and isolate, isn't it? Rings a bell, yeah. I think yeah, so. um, but certainly that we have some concerns about that um, uh, um, because I'm not quite sure um, what happens if uh, Joe Smith gets a text while he's on shift um, uh, um, working at one of our care homes um, uh, from one of the test and trace um, staff saying. Uh, he's to isolate, so he he goes home. I understand why he has to go home um, uh, and fully support that. But I'm not quite sure. Um, in my simple mind, it hasn't worked out whether that means others on the same shift, working with them, now have to go home as well. Um, I have a bit of a concern about the impact of um, of that. Um, but on on balance, I'm, I'm, I feel we're uh, in good shape. I mean, decisions on, uh, I mean, whether we have a vaccine or not is above my pay grade is equally. Decisions on lockdown relaxation are above my pay grade and that's for others to make the decisions. I have to uh, focus my mind and efforts on supporting my uh, senior management team um, all the way down in, in the best way I can in, in in dealing with the immediate challenges and things that we face. Um, I mean, certainly going into the COVID-19 crisis, we were very much looking from lockdown to wearing masks, et cetera, to be uh, ahead of government guidelines and ahead of Public Health Scotland um, guidelines. But coming out, we're very much um, uh, being, way cautious there's no way that we were before we were we even not even considered um doing outside visits before uh government and public health scotland 
um, uh, advice said it was uh, it was okay. So we're much more cautious coming out and, and going in. And equally, if there was, God forbid, the threat of a second wave, we would again look to be as we were back in March to go ahead of the um, the curve as opposed to um, to waiting. Um, it's just not something that um, uh, that we want to do. But um, I think. Um, the sector has some huge challenges um, uh, ahead, but um, uh, I think with such a great uh, workforce, and we do provide a great service, um, and uh, um, the demographics are good for us, but we need to be better valued by um, all the various government um, bodies, and that's something which uh, um, we have to make sure that now is our time this is our time now uh, as a sector and we need to make sure um, and it's up to people like uh, you people like me um, uh, to uh, uh, make sure that um, uh, our staff um, who've done such a great job do um, see uh, a higher value um, put on what they do um, the great work they do by by government and that's something I'm committed to um, doing my little bit to help in that in that regard. Well, you certainly inspired me from the perspective of um, uh, the, uh, the the work that I've done to try and help uh, keep the keep the government up to uh, up to date with the realities of the of the sector. So that's uh, that's. No, you've done you've you've done a you've you've done a fantastic job, and that WhatsApp group that you put together of the Kerem leaders has been. Um, uh, a fantastic uh, initiative of yours and um, uh, as both a, a forum to share um, experiences but also uh, as a support um, uh, because you know it, 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 it can be um, at the top of any organization uh, whatever size it can, it can be quite a lonely place and um, uh, it does really help to share um, uh, um, experiences and uh, uh, ideas um, uh, otherwise it, it can get uh, very lonely and um, uh, so it's certainly been a, a great initiative and congratulations to uh, uh, to you for that and I know we've worked together too on some of these um, letters we've been uh, doing um, and in fact what, one thing came to mind on the staffing issue is because obviously staffing going forward is a concern um, but um, uh, we made the decision I know some others did and but equally some others didn't we made the decision as a company a board of directors from the beginning of this crisis to um, pay um, is to not pay statutory sick pay not revert if staff were off, is to pay staff their full contracted hours um, uh, if they were off. Um, so that if they, they didn't, God forbid, have any feelings, not that they would, because the, the residents in the care homes are their second families. And I, I don't believe that they would um, come in uh, from, a, from a, a money point of view and risk um, spreading the disease to their second families in the care homes. But um, we certainly took the decision that uh, we would pay staff their full contracted hours if they were off um, uh, from the beginning. Um, and that was something which, um, again, it's about doing the, um, it's about doing the right thing. And, and we're fortunate being a, uh, a small company owned by the senior management. Um, and we don't have any outside um, shareholders that um, uh, if, if, if if we feel that we can uh, uh, we want to do it and we can work out a way or, or manage a way to fund it then uh, we do it um, and we're in this not for five minutes or five weeks or five months um, or even five years we're in this for the long term and uh, I mean it's 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 not rocket science if you if you look after your staff your staff will look after you it's it's pretty uh, pretty simple stuff really um, yeah, definitely. Couldn't agree more. Um, one thing that we have touched on very briefly, but I think it's worth yeah. unpacking. So how do we, I think that the profile of the social care world has been, been raised. Um, I think a lot of it has been great. I think the media, the mainstream media have had their part to play in maybe some of the not so good stuff. 
Um, and, 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 and yeah, I agree. Not, but also, in the media have helped in in some of the good stuff as well. Actually, uh, absolutely, yeah. But that. it's not. You're right. It's not all been. It's not all been good. Um, uh, um, and you know, the 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 publicity, the level of publicity, the bad gets is always much higher than the good. That's just the nature of life, sadly. Um, but the 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 press. Um, uh, can be quite naughty, yes, it can be. Um, uh, but but uh, they have also, on on occasions, been quite useful to hold the politicians' feet to the fire, um, especially when um, uh, from the sort of lunchtime in Scotland, first minister um, press conferences and the tea time press conferences, when you get the press then asking the questions, is that um, a lot of those questions. Um, during this pandemic, the press were um, getting the information direct from uh, those of us in the sector um, and saying, you know, fine first minister or fine uh, secretary of state, you're saying this, but actually what we're hearing from the front line is nothing like that and it's just not happening. Um, and so um, they, they, it wasn't all good from them, but it wasn't all bad. Mm. Yeah, no, I'd, uh, I definitely agree with that. Um, there's, there's certainly further relationships to build with the, with the public. I think as it stands today, I think the, the, the average person on the, on the street doesn't really understand about social care and how it fits into the wider healthcare system, if you like. So there's a bit of work to be done there. Oh, no, no. I think they, they certainly, they appreciate, there is a higher uh, appreciation of what, social care sector does and a higher awareness in the public. But yes, the point about where um, um, I've heard some estimates of it might take, you know, 18 months for occupancy levels to recover to pre-COVID levels. And, and there certainly is, as you rightly say, there's, there's a, uh, a job there to be done to um, uh, reassure relatives, staff, relatives, um, and the public about um, uh, uh, care homes in this country and uh, uh, all the amazing work they do. Uh, and um, there may be more aware of the, and appreciate the challenges, but, but we need to um, make sure. And that's why in our small way, and, and I know lots of others have done the same, um, uh, putting um, thermal imaging cameras and uh, air purifiers and other things in, uh, extra measures and extra uh, um, expenditure um, at a time when we are a bit struggling financially um, as a sector, a um, bit of a financial perfect storm that we've faced both in, in expenditure and income. Um, but it, it's necessary, uh, it's the right thing to do and it's necessary to do it, to begin the process of building back um, uh, confidence out there. And a lot of that, you know, is done uh, I was doing some of that this morning with um, uh, my communications and marketing um, manager, uh, who you know, uh, very able, uh, Kirstein. And mm -hmm. um, uh, um, we were actually been talking about the focus has to be going forward across our 15 homes um, is on the local, um, the local press um, uh, going forward. We must work at the sort of 15 homes that we have and and the local press sort of circle that 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 embraces those um individual 15 homes and we need to get the message out to the local communities that those 15 homes are are based in that um uh of all the measures we're taking um for staff and resident and relative um uh Safe uh, for their safety, um, and uh, and all the measures that we're uh, we're taking um, going forward, and to get the confidence level up, because yes, it has. There's no question um, through the media attention on the sector, which has in some ways been good and in other ways been bad, that um, uh, uh, we need to restore the confidence uh, there and point out all the good things we're doing that we have done and are continuing. To do and there is a job of work to be done there and I was working on on aspects of that this morning in fact. Mm. Last question before we wrap things up just because I know you've got 
a lot of things that you need to be doing today as well. But um, what do you think the most important unanswered questions are that we're, that we're facing as a sector? Um, well, I think um, uh, uh, the value of PPE is, 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 uh, is a given. Um, there's still a lot of people questioning the value of testing um, and, and particularly testing asymptomatic. Um, and, and, and there's lots of lessons on that that we need to learn before, um, God forbid, a second wave. So we need to really understand um, uh, the value of testing and the type of testing um, that's valuable um, uh, um, as quickly um, as possible. Uh, obviously, which I think we already have learned, is never to discharge um, uh, as was done from hospital. Um, I know there was, in hindsight, it's a wonderful thing, there was the concern about um, uh, NHS being overwhelmed as in Northern Italy and some parts of Spain. Um, and that's what was behind that. Um, but um, there, there is no question in, in, in my mind um, that the NHS was prioritised and, and social care was, um, and those that work and live in social care uh, surroundings were um, uh, treated, in my view, wrongly, but treated as second class citizens. They're just as valuable members of society. Um, uh, vulnerable residents of care homes as you and I and 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 that bugged me a lot during uh, during this crisis um, so we, we must make sure um, that um, social care is not treated as uh, second-class citizens going forward I mean if social care collapsed what would happen to our NHS so um, we've got way more beds and, and, and numbers than the NHS so um, it is it is a concern um, and funding, there must be an end. There must be a way of um, uh, of getting funding direct um, to the coal face, whether through directly through CQC or or Care Inspectorate, um, um, as opposed to through local authorities, um, who, for perfectly valid, and I'm sure in lots of cases, they've got lots of leaky buckets all over the place. Uh, um, um, from from uh, ten years of of austerity, say, and 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 there's lots of issues that, that, that and problems that they have, um, and so by the time government largesse that went from Westminster to local authorities in taking England's um, experience, um, uh, very little of that seems to have got through, um, and maybe more in the subsequent. Um, 600 million um, uh, got through uh, better, um, but it became hugely bureaucratic. It's like the local authorities trying to make it almost impossible for you to uh, actually um, jump over the hurdles. But the first two sort of tranches of 1.6 billion times two, um, those two, um, uh, I think, the delivery to the front line were extremely uh, poor. And I do worry that. Um, uh, as we come out of this going forward, um, with the length of time it's going to take to recover uh, occupancy levels, um, but um, and with the increased costs in the new normal of uh, running a care home, that um, uh, more care homes at a time when we need more care homes uh, demographically, that more will um, uh, close, um, and I worry about that, and I don't also think um, there'll be a huge amount of new build ones done except maybe exclusively for private uh, funded. Um, I mean that's an interesting one too that um, I mean, we have about one third private funded residents in, in our group and two thirds um, local authority uh, residents um, and we do are referred to as well why should private companies be um, supported um, and it does bug me a bit about that because we're, we are a private company but we're a private company providing um, in a public service two-thirds of our residents are um, local authority and we provide them at a, uh, a very high standard and at a, a much lower price than the local authorities provide um, uh, for residents in their own care homes and I think there's there is a need for um, uh, a, a large review as quickly as possible um, um, and 
Um, I would also like to see, as far as England's concerned, actually, um, uh, I think there's a need for uh, an elderly care czar to be um, uh, um, uh, provided uh, or put in place by um, the UK government. Um, I think there's a, a, a real uh, need for a, an elderly care uh, czar both now and going forward as part of the new normal. Um, I mean, in Scotland, we're slightly lucky, albeit a smaller country, et cetera, et cetera, um, that we have an organization that Donald McCaskill's chief executive of called um, uh, Scottish Care that speaks for 85% 86, actually it's 87 I was told this morning, 87% of um, the uh, independent care home sector. Um, and uh, whereas in England, there's, it's quite, um, uh, it's not scattered, but, but um, it's quite a fragmented um, area. Um, care England obviously are the, are the largest and Martin Green um, as our CEO has done an amazing job throughout this crisis um, and uh, including um, on some occasions I've heard him on on the radio amazingly keeping his cool uh, yeah. with some of the questions from Nick Robinson particularly come to mind on on one radio four program Martin's been brilliant at, uh, at getting them at being statesmanlike and getting the message across without um, uh, it descending into a, 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 a rant, which is quite easy, as I know from my own painful experience, it's quite easy to get kind of um, uh, into that kind of ranting mode, which doesn't actually um, help or advance the cause or, or, or the issue. So I think there is a need maybe for um, uh, a less fragmented representing um, body um, in uh, bodies in, in England so that government when they speak to the care home sector in England really need to be speaking um, uh, to one voice, one organisation. So I think that's something England have to, we're fortunate in Scotland that we have that, but in England I think there's a need uh, for that to happen um, uh, as well as the need for I think an elderly care czar um, um, out of this um, and we've got a short term review and a longer term review and an overall reform of social care all to come uh, down the line. So there's certainly an action pact, um, look after and care for our own uh, businesses, uh, absolutely, but we've also to work together. And I think that is another positive thing that's come out of, and particularly your group, is, um, your, the group that you set up on WhatsApp has been of care home operators, uh, has been uh, a, a superb example of that, is, we have worked well together uh, um, as a sector and as a group um, through this, and we mustn't, again, we must uh, move forward from that and, and continue that um, collaborative way of working. Um, we are competitors, yes, um, uh, but uh, we need to work together um, for the good of uh, all our staff and residents and relatives um, and, and for the good of our uh, businesses. So I think there's a lot of work to be done, and uh, I look forward to uh, working with lots of my colleagues in the sector on it, and working with you too on highlighting and, and improving the, um, the the issues. I do. Um, I mean, it's a it's a it's a quite a, a, a challenging task to leading an organisation uh, at the best of times, and and certainly leading an organisation. And I have made some notes on this, so that notes to self, if you like. Because um, when you get to my advanced years, um, uh, your memory does tend to go. So you need to write things down more. And so notes to self about um, the, what I did well, what I did badly, and what I would do differently are, are, are very much um, uh, front and centre for me uh, just now. Um, uh, and certainly leadership is, is never easy at the best of times, but during COVID has been particularly tough um, and equally actually um, out of COVID uh, and going forward because um, I am, uh, despite all we've been talking about, if you like, I am positive about the sector and about the future um, and um, uh, a part of that positivity or a large part of that positivity is around um, uh, the amazing staff that we have and, and it, it's, um, I wouldn't want to work in any other 
um, sector and I'm very proud to be associated with the sector, um, even more so now, say, than, than, than pre-COVID. And it's about um, playing my small part when given the opportunity going forward to uh, help improve um, how the sector is viewed and funded by government and, and look at lessons learned and help uh, drive things forward. I'm, I am, in a strange way, excited about the challenge ahead. I like um, uh, challenges. As I said earlier, I'm a Scottish rugby team uh, supporter and, and so I like um, challenges. I don't believe uh, in lost causes. I believe in challenging situations and I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to, to the future. And thank you for all that you do for the sector um, and for your uh, support and encouragement you give to the leaders of, um, uh, of the sector. It's much, much, much appreciated. And um, thank you for your time. Well, it's uh, it's uh, it's great to great to hear that, and I'm just very appreciative of all the people in the network, yourself included. We we all play a part, as you say, in um, in driving for reform with the, the public perception and just doing what doing from, from from an operational standpoint, just making sure that the uh, the care home businesses are running the the best way possible, so that the teams are well looked after, yep. and the residents are looked after as well. So. Robert Kilgar, a pleasure as always, sir. Uh, it's been great having you back on the Care Home Show and uh, thank you very much for your time. It's a pleasure, uh, my pleasure, and thank you, Simon, for your time. Thank you.